uh, make people want peace more than they want other things uh, is beyond me. Christopher Hitchens. It's become a familiar thing. I, I should perhaps preface this by saying that with Edward Said, the late uh, Professor Edward Said, I, I wrote a book about the rights of Palestinians and the way in, this, in which these have been negated by Israeli policy. But um, I know a lot of people in the Arab and Muslim world who are fed up with having the subject changed to Israel whenever human rights for them comes up. A very good example of this just last week in Tehran, where the government has an official Al-Quds Day, as it's called, the Day of Jerusalem, where schoolchildren and others are paraded. It's a more or less compulsory demonstration to say they'll give their blood and their lives for Palestine. And, and hundreds of thousands of Iranians turned up to say, no, we'll only give our blood for Iran, thanks. We're fed up with being told by the regime that they represent the oppressed of Palestine, that we can't talk. And, it, and they are having to shed their blood because the regime keeps on killing them for wanting to have a say in their own internal affairs. And a regime that does this and has just pulled off a, a blood-stained military coup uh, that's overturned the results even of an already predeterminedly fraudulent election that says that, the, the, that a woman's voice is worth that of only... Uh, th it, sorry, it takes three women in a court against one man. Um, that uses torture and rape as, uh, as policies in prison and so forth. You want a regime like that to have nuclear weapons? You're welcome. But you should say that's what you don't mind. Are you going to say that? Are you going to say you've no objection? That the real problem is the Jewish state? Come on, no. be serious. So, so you <laughs> So the Jewish state doesn't have nuclear weapons? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, now, I appeal again to the fair-mindedness and intelligence of the audience. Did I say that? No, but did I by any, in any way imply it? No, but no. did I not begin with a, a throat clearing, which I'll, I'll amplify if you will, <laughs> about my long record of work about this, my defence of the Israeli dissidents who published the news about Israel's illegal program and gone to jail for it? I can refer you to all that if you like. But my point was directed specifically to you. Yeah. I said, does okay. this, in your mind, make the destruction of human rights in Islamic countries okay or not? No. Good. Okay. No, let's let's hear from Walid. Well, that's progress of a kind. <laughs> this is, I, I think, highlights the really difficult, I, I think personally intractable situation that now confronts the world in dealing with uh, Iran's apparent nuclear weapons regime. And I hear today that the UN is still arguing that they're not developing weapons. But whatever you think about that, there is a problem because you do get questions like this, whether or not you agree with Christopher that there's a lack of moral seriousness about that question. You're always going to get that question. The minute the, the conversation turns to Iran, it is going to be deflected towards Israel. And so the problem is that if you're interested in disarming Iran or somehow reigning in that regime, it's very hard to do that in isolation without also engaging in some kind of agreement that's going to that's going to bring Israel into the into the mix and of course the US who also have <laughs> nuclear weapons I'm encouraged by the fact that President Obama is talking about a nuclear free world and that when he headed the, the UN secure presided over the UN Security Council this week which I think the first time an American president has ever done that uh, the vote to rid the world of nuclear weapons was unanimous that's that's all good but now the really really tough politics starts and that is the politics of dealing with an Iranian regime that, frankly, probably sees very little incentive, if any, to try to disarm or to become less evil. It's got every reason to remain as evil and perhaps have become even more evil than it is. And Israel is going to have to be part of that discussion, whether they like it or not, um, whether the US likes it or not, because without that, you, I just can't see how there's a way forward. On Tony, it. sorry, I, I simply must say this. I'm really sorry. Um, implied in both what Walid has said and the lady questioner, is the idea that Iran is perfectly entitled to have nuclear weapons. At least as if Israel is, it is. No, no, that's not what I thought well, at all. Well, the Iranian government, don't let's forget, says it doesn't want them and isn't planning to have them. Mm. And so if it turns out they are, it's not a problem to do with Israel. It's to do with them breaking every undertaking they've ever made at the United Nations, every undertaking they've ever made to the International Atomic Energy Authority, every undertaking they've ever made to the European Union negotiators. It means that international law is completely meaningless. And yet, when Mr. Ahmadinejad tests missiles, he says this is part of our nuclear program. How is that part of a peace yeah, program? I, can I just say... Their party, their proxy party Hezbollah, I've been to its rallies in Beirut. Do you know what the symbol of the party now is? What they put on the flag? A mushroom cloud. Uh, with a threat to the Jews uh, written underneath it. 
Can I, can now, I say actually, it? when you go to meetings of uh, the American Jewish Committee, you don't Christopher, quite get that. <laughs> Christopher, hold on, we're just going to hear from Waleed, yeah, then uh, uh, I'm going to go to another question uh, which is related. I think that's a bit of a gross misreading of what I was saying. I'm yeah. certainly not implying that. What I, but what I am saying is the real politic of dealing with this situation is that for the Iranian regime, if you put yourself in the position of the Iranian regime, that has now become such a grotesque, deformed regime, that in a sense it has to perpetuate that deformity in order to survive. That's kind of the logic of those sorts of regimes. The minute you do that, they are now in a position where it's just going to be 